in every, just about every play, including Macbeth, there are places in the play where words just don't work, where they don't make sense, where a, a, somebody who's writing down the play has goofed and written in the wrong word, or whether, where the person setting the text has written in the wrong word. And um, there are places like that in Macbeth. Um, but most of, they, they aren't real problems for an editor today, most of them, because this was what the 18th century did for us, is that beginning with Tybalt in uh, the, the 1730s, uh, editors spent many decades of the, of the 18th century figuring out what those words had to be. And it's a beautiful thing to watch if you trace it through. Uh, for example, in um, Act 1, Scene 2, there are a couple of places where if you look in our text notes, you'll see that where we have put in the word quarrel, in the folio the word was quarry. And then a few lines later in that scene, uh, there's, we have a word at the end of a line, the word break, B-R-E-A-K, in square brackets. And if you look in the text notes, you'll find out that that word was simply missing from the folio. So if you go back and look through the 18th century editions to see how those words got picked up and changed and why they get changed, you will see that, um, that the word quarry was not questioned until the 1760s when Samuel Johnson noticed that in context, the word made absolutely no sense. And so in his note, he explains why it doesn't make sense about how Shakespeare uses the word quarry, about it's talking about a damned quarry, and why that doesn't make any sense in the context. And he suggests that the word quarrel, the way Shakespeare has used it in many other plays, that that is what he's going for there. And then after that, George Stevens comes along and in his edition says Johnson is absolutely right and he gives yet more examples. And then Malone comes along in 1790 and says, yes, yeah, both of these guys are right and he gives yet more examples. So by the time you get to 1790, it's, it's firmly fixed and you can't doubt that the word quarrel is what was intended and somebody just got it wrong. And then, so a, a lot of the uh, the words that we call emendations, that is changes that editors make, uh, most of them were made in the 18th century and, and the editors, if you go back and look at their, um, at their arguments, you can see how they worked it out. They worked it out usually starting from context, from figuring out that, that in, the, in the play it just doesn't make, the word doesn't make sense, it doesn't fit with Shakespeare's other usage of that word. And then they look around for other words that could have looked something like that, that Shakespeare did use in ways that make sense of the passage. And then for later editors will agree with them or disagree with them. And so usually by about 1790, those problems have been worked out. Uh, the word break that was added at the end of the line, uh, beginning with the second folio, which was uh, 1632, very quickly after the first folio was published. Whoever was editing the second folio, we don't know that, but whoever was doing it uh, recognized that there was a, the, 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 the line didn't have a verb and suggested the word breaking, B-R-E-A-K-I-N-G. And so that's what appeared in the second folio and the third folio and the fourth folio and Nicholas Rowe, the first named editor, picked it up and used it and so did Alexander Pope, who was the next editor. But Lewis Tybalt, um, it, when he did his edition, decided that, and for, I think for very good reason, it was so obvious that he do doesn't even have a note explaining it. He just changed it to break, and that's what editors have used ever since. So the work of the modern editor, all that kind of basic core work, was started by uh, Lewis Tybalt and was continued from editor after editor until the text finally kind of all those major problems got worked out. There are uh, many plays still have some that people have never worked out, but Macbeth doesn't, doesn't have to be one of them. So the word choices that we had to make, the, the major work had been done for us. 
um, we have questions about things like um, the this like the speech pre prefixes, whether we do witch or weird sister. Um, but aside from that, we didn't have any kind of major problems with with word choice in this particular play.